Hello, I have these microphones and they are connected by this and that interface is connected to this laptop by USB cable also there is an HDMI cable for the monitor and I want to send keyboard signals like the letter A for example or B and I want to do this by tapping my touch screen on my phone or my iPhone but in this video you will also learn how to do it by tapping a MIDI key on a MIDI keyboard or a button on a MIDI controller because there's quite some workarounds necessary. Also tablets and other computers will work. If this is interesting to you, stick around. By the way, this is for Windows PCs and we're gonna be using MIDI Mixer, which on its own allows using MIDI keyboards and MIDI controllers as keyboard inputs. We will combine this with Loop MIDI to create a fake MIDI device which we then can combine with open stage control with which we can send MIDI signals which will arrive at the loop MIDI device and which MIDI mixer will then convert into key presses. If you already think it will be useful, give it a like. We are starting with MIDI mixer, which is a community driven freeware tool and you download it by pressing the download manually button because I'm not sure what's going on here. Probably some Windows Store button missing. So when you double click the setup tool, it will automatically install MIDI mixer. The nice thing about this is that it does not require admin rights and I don't think it needs firewall access. You can also extract it using 7-zip if you're paranoid about installing freeware apps. But in the end, you will still have to run the MIDI mixer application. And what we're gonna do is simply create a new profile. In this new profile, we can ignore groups and simply go to CO controls. But in controls, we can just add one new one. And let's, for example, call this a key, a key, not a key. And now let's press learn entire control. But before we can do that, we have to select an input, which is not our audio interface, but the connected MIDI controller. So I will start by plugging in one of my MIDI devices. So we're gonna shut down MIDI mixer. Actually, I could have pressed restart. And now let's go to the new profile we created. Go to controls, press a key, and as input, it will be the key station mini 32. And if we press learn entire control, and it starts listening, and then we press a key, and it works, like it reacted. And it's learned that this is channel one, control 48. So this is control 48. If we learn an entire control, press something else. This is control 50, control 52, control 53, you know, because of the black keys, control 49. But back to control 48, also we can use these. Um, edit. Can we not? I guess we cannot. Uh, these can be a bit tricky at times, like extra controls. What about volume? Yeah, we can use that, which is channel 1, control 8. But we're going to just use, for now, this key. Note on channel 1, control 48. And now we can assign this to a key press, for example. This we do in buttons over here. Oh yeah, and we have to set it as a button. And if we go to buttons now, here we have the A key. And we can assign it to a lot of different stuff like media keys. We can assign it to a run command running an exe file. We can change output and input devices or we can send a key combination like for example the simple key combination of the letter A. And if we press done and just open some kind of notepad. That doesn't quite work yet. Okay so this was a bit weird. Let's set this to at least a minimum push, push value of 1 and make sure it's enabled. And then it works. And if I switch it to control 49. Yep, that works too. But if I disable velocity sensitive, it doesn't work at all. So make sure to enable it if it doesn't work for you. Okay, now we're gonna try the same with the uh, Nano Control 2 by Korg. Korg. So I'm just going to un unplug this, and as you can see, it disappears immediately in MIDI Mixer. 
And as soon as we connect the nano control to, it lights up. And now we have to actually pick the nano control two here in this list and make sure that we have an input nano control two. My nano will be the name of this device or profile. Oh yeah, of course, we have to press this button, load here. So now it's loaded. We can unload it with the green loaded button. So again, my nano, make sure it's loaded. Go to my buttons and here we are. For example, play is over here. Let's assign that to X. That was just me pressing X on the keyboard. And now if we press play, yep, it presses X. And stop, we can assign to B. Uh, stop is over here. B we, B we go. So, because I'm not sure what is what, let's just go to profiles. Let's go to the My Nano profile. Let's go to CO for controls. And let's create maybe a new control. My CTRL. And let's just learn it and press S, for example. That would be channel 1, control 32, command CC. Let's make it a button. Go to buttons and uh, my control will be assigned to, in this case, just the letter I. And there we go. All right, so much for MIDI mixer. Next, we need to loop MIDI, which we simply download. Loop MIDI you have to extract on your own and then install. And because it installs a device, a virtual device, you have to give it admin rights. You have to agree to the license terms. Shortcut we can remove later. We will add it to auto start, can remove later. I'm not sure this does anything, but let's keep it on. Give it admin rights, as I said. And now we can launch it. Just like MIDI Mixer, it has an icon in the system tray. And we simply create a new device here. And we can just keep the name Loop MIDI Port 1. That's all we need to do here for now. Finally, we need Open Stage Control. For that, we need the Windows version, since we are on Windows. Open Stage Control ships in a zip file. You'll have to extract that too. That can take a while. Here it is. So if I want a shortcut, I just have to right-click, drag the exe file to the desktop and create a shortcut. And the first thing we're going to do is press the menu, the burger icon, and press list media devices. This is going to take a little bit the first time. We have the audio interface, which is relevant in this case, and we have the loop MIDI port one, which is this thing. So we know our MIDI device is number one. For the input, for the output, it's two, which is irrelevant, but we're going to need that anyways. So in MIDI, in this area, we're going to write loop and then colon one from here, comma two from here. And now it's valid again. And then we're going to start it, which opens this UI and also gives us a local IP address and a local network IP address. And if we put either of these on the same computer into the URL, we get basically the same interface. That's identical practically. But nothing is happening yet. We're going to keep this open so we can see if there's any MIDI data being sent. We're going to move this over here so we can see if anything is happening here. And in the open stage UI window, we're going to open a new session, which we're going to save as, and we're going to call it keys. So it was saved as keys.json now. And here we're going to right click the interface, press add widget, basics, button. This we can resize. We can rename it, but for now, let's leave it at button one. We can already use this button. It doesn't do anything yet since we see there is no MIDI data being sent. But I want this to be not a toggle, but a push button. So only while I hold it down, anything happens. This we change in the button area. What we could try at this point is open MIDI Mixer and create a new profile. And currently I think there is no rename feature. So let's copy this profile and name this loop, my loop. I guess. 
So this is our My Loop Device MIDI Mixer uh, profile. And here we're going to create a new control, key 1. And if we want to learn this, that doesn't work. We need to set an input. The input will be the loop MIDI port. If we want to learn this, doesn't work. No input found for profile. Let's load this. All right. Now let's learn it. So when something happens here, it should be learned here, but it doesn't work yet because we still are not sending anything through this. And this happens here in the OSC area. We're going to use a control type control. So we're going to use a forward slash and the word control, lowercase, no space. Pre-args is going to contain in square parentheses the channel and the control number, which can start with zero. Channel starts with one. When we click away, it gets formatted as an array. OK, fine. We can still change this if we want. And the target has to be the name of the device we defined here in MIDI. So it's just going to be MIDI colon loop. All right, if you press this, you can see there is some bytes coming through. And also this got learned. Again, let's press learn and something happened. Let's set this as a button. And let's go to buttons and assign this key one to a key combination A. And if we get this notepad over here, this will not work because we are pressing in here, which uh, gives focus to this window. So nothing reaches here. But we do see that data is being sent. So this can't really be tested here. Instead, first I'm going to save the session just in case, because we did make some changes. And this IP address for the local network, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to type that on my phone now. 192.168.178.38 colon 80 and 80 again. And if I press enter, you can see I'm in stage control. And if I go to session and open recent this one. So here it is. Here's the button that I can press and it flashes up on the display of my computer, of my laptop as well even though I'm pressing it on my phone. And you can see there is a data throughput while I tap it. And now let's see if it actually causes the key to be pressed. So here we go. Not quite. Let's try again. We are here in MIDI Mixer. We're going to set Learn Entire Control again. Tap it here. Yep, it's learned. And does it work? No. Maybe we need to enable this after all. No. Set this to zero. There we go. It types A twice though. Tap twice. Not good. How about minimum push value one? Tap. Yeah, here we go. So now we get with one tap, one key press. And of course, on the computer, we can, or we could even edit it here on the phone if we go to, uh, where is it, editor and enabled. But this is not comfy for me. I want to edit it on the computer instead. And I just want to press it here. But we can go to full screen mode here, which is pretty cool. So on the computer, I'm going to copy this and paste it here. Well, no, move. How do I? Click, move. All right, I'm just going to resize you. Like, Oh, here we go. The top left corner is for moving. This one I'm going to call ID2. Uh, let me just save this. Ah, oh, yeah, and it appears immediately on the phone. And we're going to send this as control 1, 1. And let's, again, save it. If we tap this, OK, something happens. If we tap this, nothing happens. So we need to assign the second control as well. So let's create a new key, key two, learn it, tap. This is now channel one, control one, as opposed to channel one, control zero. We're going to set it as a, a button with velocity sensitive enabled minimum one. That should be it here. OK, in buttons, we're going to assign this to the letter B. Okay, so A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A. 
And then I can tap to my heart's delight and add more buttons here. Let me actually add one here. That will be an editor enabled. Tap that. Can I hold? Yeah, copy this. Hold here and paste and paste. Oh, I should have. <laughs> there was actually a feature for ID plus one. This is too annoying. So I'm gonna. Okay, so first I'm changing the ID of these buttons. And then in OSC, I'm also changing the parameters, the pre arg parameters of which control it actually is. So this one becomes from 1,1 1, 1 to 1,2, 1, 2, for example. But I still need to go back to the computer and go to MIDI mixer, go to controls, add a new control, key free, learn, press this. Did it work? It seems to have worked. Let's save this, by the way. Session save. And just like here, we're going to set it to a button. Just like here, we're going to set it to velocity sensitive one. All right, and we're going to go to buttons and set it to, you guessed it, the C key. So C, 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 B, 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 A, A, A. Here we go. So I will extend this. I will make them nice and big, set their regions. And my goal was to make a super quiet numpad, basically, to replace this. This, by the way, is an Android smartphone, so I'm going to try this with an iPhone as well. So let's see if we can do this in Safari, because I don't think Safari is supported officially. All right, we're going to go to Session and open Recent and open this one. And let me focus the notepad. It works. Now, OK, yeah, I can even... Well, OK, so this is janky, moving around this area. Let's see, full screen mode works. No, full screen doesn't work, but the buttons work. I hope this is very useful. Let me know about your specific use case for this in the comments. And I hope to see you in another random video of niche tech stuff of mine. Until then, ciao. All right, so this is the layout that I ended up with. Yeah, not really an numpad, Unicode uh, icons, fast forward stuff record button stuff. And I use it in an obscure piece of software to start recording, pause, start playback, skip between markers, play fast forward while I hold down, and play slow while I hold down. And you can do that too.